What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and today Apple held their WWDC event where we got to hear about all of the new features coming to iOS, iPadOS, macOS, Monterey, and a bunch more. Uh, but today we are going to be talking about all of the coolest features coming to the iPhone, as well as some of the other cool features from the other operating systems. So iOS 15 is official and Apple just came out the gate swinging with a bunch of new FaceTime updates and these are really significant. FaceTime now has something called FaceTime links and basically what that means is FaceTime is coming to Android. And it's not just Android, it's also coming to any operating system that has a web browser, so Windows, Linux, whatever can open a web browser, you're gonna be able to FaceTime from. Now this is called FaceTime links. So basically you're gonna be able to share a FaceTime link with someone so that they can jump on a FaceTime call with you. And like I said, it can open on any browser, which means we're finally gonna be able to see some form of FaceTime on Android devices or even Windows. And of course with Apple being Apple, they prioritize privacy. So you can have an encrypted connection when you're on those FaceTime calls. So this is cool to see it coming to other operating systems sort of because i don't think you can generate a facetime call from android or windows you're gonna need that person with ios or some form of apple software in order to make the link so until we get some more information i don't think it's going to be as universal as it may sound right at first uh, but still being able to share a link with someone to finally get on facetime who's not using any of apple's operating systems it's gonna be nice. But not only that, Apple introduced another cool feature called SharePlay. And basically with SharePlay, if you're on a FaceTime call, you can share music with someone on the other side or even a video. So basically, you guys can listen to music together at the same time. So if you're listening to this dope song, I could send it to Jay, like, yo, Jay, you gotta hear this. We're on FaceTime, we're vibing out to the music. Or if we're watching a video and like, let's say I'm watching this dope fight scene, and I'm like, yo, Carl, you gotta check this out, look at this fight. We are gonna be able to watch it at the exact same time. Apple says that it should stay in sync between the two devices. It should make for some really easy content watching. So when you're on FaceTime with someone, you guys are watching something on Netflix, you don't have to say, hold on one second, pause. Okay, three, two, one, play. You don't have to do any of that. It should just all sync, which is going to make our lives a lot easier. Now, something that's even crazier or that I'm gonna appreciate with SharePlay is being able to share your screen. So you're gonna be able to share certain applications that you have open. So if you wanna share what's on your iPhone screen with the person on the other side, you're gonna be able to do that. Why I think that's really cool is because if my dad, whew, if my dad has a question about how to do something on iOS, I no longer have to ask him, what do you see? Do you see this button? Do you see a certain thing here? Now he can show me exactly what he sees and I can say, all right, tap that, tap that, hit that toggle, boom. Troubleshooting for guys like me is going to be so much easier because of this. And some fair warning to you folks out there, if your significant other wants to see what's going on on your screen at the moment, you better be careful. Times are changing, y'all. <laughs> but all jokes aside, I think SharePlay is going to be dope and it just kind of makes the FaceTime experience even better. Now there's some other cool features that they announced with FaceTime like portrait mode. If you wanna have like a nice blurry background look like you have some like really professional video stuff going on while you're on that FaceTime call, that feature is also coming. There's also gonna be spatial audio coming to FaceTime. So if you're in a group chat and you've got a bunch of people, it won't sound like a bunch of people talking at the same time in your ear. You should be able to hear some separation between the voices so someone could be coming in a little bit over here, over here, over here. There's gonna be a sound stage to all the different voices. You're gonna be able to pinpoint what one person's saying a bit more than the other, if depending on how you're moving your head or where people are placed. We have to test that out and see how it actually functions, but it sounds really cool. There's some other cool voice features like voice isolation, so you can focus more on your voice and kind of get rid of background noise. So, you know, there's gonna be some like noise suppression and there's also gonna be a different feature called wide spectrum where it basically lets all of the sound in, there's no isolation, kind of let everything happening around you and your voice happen at the same time. I'm not sure what the best use case scenario for that one would be. What would you say, Jay? Like, traveling? I don't want to hear nobody <laughs> traveling in the background. 
What, a concert, maybe? But yeah, lots of features coming to FaceTime. They paid a lot more attention to FaceTime than I would have expected, but it's all very nice and welcome changes. Now, another new feature that Apple introduced is called Focus. So with Focus, you can set certain applications to be the priority. So if you're focusing on work, you can have emails, uh, messages, that kind of stuff. You can have your device focus on the important things. So notifications from things like mobile games, social media, that will be blocked out and you can just focus on the things that you need to get done. And what's also nice about this, depending on the focus that you're having, you can have a customized home screen so that you can stay on task and have everything that you need access to right at your fingertips. I personally love this. I feel like I'm gonna be trying this feature a lot because sometimes your boy gets distracted. Instagram be looking real tempting, you guys. So if I turn on my work focus, I'll have my emails, I'll have my calendar, that kind of stuff, where I just kind of get my work done and then I'll move on to like my personal focus, where I switch to things like my mobile games and social media, that kind of stuff. And what's also cool about focus is that it carries over to other devices. So if you're focused on work or something, you go over to your iMac or your iPad and your focus should be available there as well. So wherever you go, if your devices know that you're trying to get a certain thing done, it'll carry over to all of them, which makes life a lot easier. And speaking of notifications, guys, we are finally going to get a nice update to notifications in general. So now you can have a notification summary. Now, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I wake up in the morning, you know, you've got a bunch of different notifications from all kinds of apps and I'm always sifting through to see the important ones, messages that came in, emails, that kind of stuff. But I'm always going in between those and other random applications. Now we can finally have a summary of all of the stuff that's not as important in one spot, but messages, emails, those still come in the way we're used to. And we have a summary of all the extra stuff. Now what's cool about the summary is that you can pretty much arrange it to how you want to receive it pin certain things, uh, have it come in at a certain time. We're getting a lot more power and customization to our notifications, allowing us to have a bit more control of what pops up and what can distract us from something else. Now we're getting another cool feature called live text. So basically what live text will do is allow you to take a photo of text and it is going to be able to pretty much scan it, read what's on there, and then you'll be able to pretty much interact with the text that's on the photo. This is great. Like when I was in college, I would take pictures of the board that the that the professor would write on all the time. And this kind of feature would have been so clutch back in the day. So basically any text that you see in a photo, whether it's a screenshot or a normal photo, you're gonna be able to interact with that, which is kind of cool because if you see like a store name in the background, you can click it, pull up its location. And I can imagine that stuff being really powerful. Let's say you see a photo of someone at a certain restaurant, like, oh, that restaurant looks dope. You see its name in the photo, you can click it and then look it up. There's just a lot of possibilities there and I think that's gonna be a really cool feature. Now this last feature, I feel like it's gonna slide under a lot of people's radar. It's the wallet app. Now you're gonna be able to have a bit more flexibility within the wallet app and it's gonna be a game changer, watch. So one of the things they announced is the wallet app being able to work with certain cars and being able to unlock doors with the cars if it supports it. I think new manufacturers are gonna be coming out with that capability. So imagine like your keys are pretty much gonna be within your phone for like your car, even your home is gonna be able to do it. So we're gonna be moving into a space where this guy is going to have like all of the important stuff. So being able to access your car, your home, and now even hotels. Apple's adding support to take your hotel key, scan it with your iPhone, and be able to unlock your hotel door with it. And what's cool is that you're gonna be able to do things like even check in right from your phone. So if this eliminates having to go to the front desk, that's gonna be huge, you guys. You just check in, you get your room number, and you go right up to the room with your phone and unlock it. I love the idea of that. Now, you know what else is gonna be able to come to your wallet? Your ID. Does it, that just makes sense. Your ID is always in your wallet and now it's gonna have support on the iPhone. So you can have like your driver's license within your wallet, which is huge. Now, of course, having access to that ID is going to be encrypted. And I think for starters, it's going to be able to work at TSA. So you can go ahead, check in for a flight, right with your phone. That means less interactions with things outside of your phone. Your phone is gonna be that one-stop shop. I'm really, really excited for that. Now for me, those were the biggest announcements coming to iOS 15, uh, things that I think most people are going to enjoy on their iPhones. 
but they announced a bunch of other cool software features for other devices. I'm just gonna tell you guys some of my favorites. Now, of course, next, iPad OS. Uh, they're now going to allow more widgets to be available on the home screen. You can customize your home screen with different widgets everywhere instead of the current one section that is there on iPad OS now. Now you'll be able to space them out throughout your home screen and even have access to different sizes. So if you wanna have like a huge photo widget, you're gonna be able to do that. What's also coming to iPad OS is finally the app library. I wanted access to the app library ever since they introduced it on the iPhone. I think it's going to make for a nicer, cleaner experience on the iPad instead of having access to just pages and pages and pages of icons. We're past that now. They also showed some cool features coming to notes, like being able to swipe from the bottom right to have a quick note. And also that quick note being able to take context of what's going on on the screen, add URLs and other kind of stuff. Now, Apple also added the ability to organize your notes using like tags. So if you add a certain hashtag to your notes, uh, you'll be able to go in and see right on the left side column, all the different tags that you have, and you can just click each note that has something to do with that tag. I think that's going to make organization a lot easier. When I saw that feature, I was kind of hyped because it's so easy to get lost in a sea of different notes. Now being able to know what this note is all about, and without having like folders, it's gonna be really good. They also added a couple new features to AirPods, but I think my favorite feature so far is the ability to find them a bit better using the Find My app. It's going to be very similar to the way AirTags works. And what's great about this is that it works like this even when the AirPods case is closed. Uh, that was always like the downside when your AirPods case were closed, you weren't able to find your AirPods, but now they're changing that. I think that's going to be a game changer. It's like the AirPods are now going to be AirTags. Of course though, you're not gonna wanna leave your AirPods in something just for the sake of tracking, but it should make it a lot easier to find them. So it works on each AirPod as well as the case, even when the case is closed. Huge, this was a necessary update. And another cool feature coming to AirPods is spatial audio with TV OS. This is a feature that everybody was hoping to hear about when the new Apple TV was announced. And here it is. So now with spatial audio, if you're looking in a certain direction, you can kind of have that audio still coming from directly in front of you or to the side of you. Spatial audio is kind of cool and I'm glad to see it come to AirPods. Now I mentioned before that macOS is now called macOS Monterey and there's gonna be a really cool feature there called universal control. With universal control, let's say you bring an iPad over to your MacBook, you're gonna be able to take the cursor from your MacBook, slide it on over to the iPad and be able to control what's going on over there right from your MacBook without any special setup. And not only that, if you add another one, I believe they showed an example of an iMac next to a MacBook Pro next to an iPad. You can swing things between all of them all in one go. Huge, huge game changer. I'm super excited for that because if you use your iPad as a companion device to like a MacBook or something, being able to use them all together without having to do anything crazy, insane. And we all know that Macs come with great screens. So whether it's an iMac or it's a Mac Pro with the XDR display attached, what's cool is you are going to now be able to AirPlay to a Mac device. And I love that. It's gonna be nice to be able to take advantage of that big, beautiful display and just send things over like from your iPhone straight to it. I feel like this feature has been a long time coming. And of course, there were some new features added to watchOS. And I think my favorite feature was being able to take a portrait mode photo and create like an awesome watch face. And they showed some examples of it moving kind of like in 3D, uh, the clock time being able to be behind a subject. I can't wait to mess around with that a lot. Uh, they also showed the ability to send photos right from your Apple Watch. I don't know how many people are gonna sit there and you know take the time to do that, but if you're on the go or something, you don't wanna pull out your phone, maybe it could be cool, but having the ability to do more with a watch, I'm not gonna complain about. But I just wanted to give you guys a quick little rundown of what I think were some of the coolest features coming to all of the different software. So iOS 15 coming to iPhones, Mac OS, Monterey, iPad OS, Watch OS. Those are some of my favorites. If I missed like a really cool one, let me know with a comment down below. I'll of course, have links down below in the description so you guys can learn about some of the other features that I didn't mention. Apple's always got more than what they highlighted in the event, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be the cool guy or girl that gives this video a thumbs up. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. It is super unfortunate 
that we didn't get any hardware announcements, but say la vie. Till the next one, guys. Peace. Jay, favorite feature, go. FaceTime. FaceTime, <laughs> easy. <laughs>